Over the time spent on a specific fighting game title, players will adapt, grow, and evolve their game plan multiple times as they progress their skills. Sometimes we can get stuck in a particular mindset and locked into a level and plateau. How fast we stay at each stage is individual to each player and we all learn at different rates. A new player's game plan begins, of course, at the first level, at what I call the primitive game plan stage. I hesitate to say that they have no game plan at all, because don't we all have the same game plan at the heart of it? Just take your opponent's health to zero and win the match. That's all true enough, but the game plan players develop helps address the how element. How can a player actually make that opponent KO happen? Players in this stage are often very green. And it's why any new fighting game player looks like they are trying to channel the force of their character's punches through their own button presses, as if there's a direct correlation between the strength of the mash and the strength of the move. Most gamers unfamiliar with fighting games are used to thinking about their character avatar being far and above the rest of the enemies. We all have a lifetime of background gaming knowledge that insists you can mow down hordes of enemies. A lot of titles let you go Rambo and chew through bad guys which are little more than fodder temporarily blocking your way to the next area. The player wants to exert their will on the enemy, but the great feature of fighting games is that there is someone sitting next to you or on the other side of the screen wanting to do the same to you. But regardless. I think that background knowledge is part of the reason new people tend to mash. I also think this is why the rushdown archetype is typically both strong and well represented among the player base of most fighting games. Maybe people at their core just want to get up in their opponent's face and press some good buttons. Still, stage 1 players here can't yet easily recognize scenarios, what moves are safe or punishable, so all frame data nuance is out the window. Blocking is an afterthought, the game seemingly moves too fast for them, it's hard to recognize differences between attacks, and really anything outside of basic screen positioning. They live and die moment to moment, mash to mash, and typically with full resources. And without any reflection, like a message on the shore, the memory of the match is wiped away as the next set is queued up. Then the mashing continues. Occasionally players at stage 1 will mash a powerful normal with priority or plus frames or whatever and after success they will learn to lean on it. These players have graduated to the next level higher. Here we find the universal game plan stage. Good moves, efficient in terms of risk and reward, float to the top of a player's arsenal. Although this is much better than blind mashing, it can still devolve into square peg round hole scenarios. A player has found success with something, or even a small toolbox of moves, and now tries to apply these moves and this game plan universally. Oftentimes, they are over-reliant on aggression. This is part of the reason why invincible wake-up moves are so successful at lower ranks, and also why mashing those DPs through an opponent's strings seems to work so well. This is likewise the stage, at least in Street Fighter, where we start to see a lot of jump-in combos. Even just a simple, heavy jump into a sweep for a basic two-hit combo and a knockdown. Jump-ins allow players to skip the grounded neutral game and just get up close and personal so they can get back to pressing those buttons in the face of the opponent. Jump-ins can be difficult to anti-air for many players newer to fighting games and the damage from a successful DP doesn't always discourage their opponent from trying again, so the odds skew toward the attacker. But, once an opponent can identify the universal offensive strategy, usually a combination of jump-in sweeps and a good button or two, it can start to fall apart. That's because the player at this stage is so concerned with applying this universal offense that they will fail to consider if it's actually the best approach against this character. Hammering away, trying to make it fit and work, players will often give their opponent ample opportunities for punishes, the opponent just accepts the rope they need to hang the player from their own mistakes. Players graduating from this stage set down the hammer and get more specific and deliberate in their approach. Once they realize that there are no one-size-fits-all scenarios in fighting games, they transition to the next level. And it can take time and a bit of distance to see things that way. Reviewing footage from years ago, holes in my own gameplay seem glaringly obvious to me now sweeps into the opponent's wake-up, 
unsafe point blank stance switches into command grab attempts, raw unmetered wall dives. But back then, I didn't fully understand and appreciate the true lack of my understanding. Basically, I didn't know how much I didn't know. Today, after years of semi-regular play, I still have a fair far way to go to even think about cracking EVO Top 8 in any title, but that doesn't matter. I've had fun with my progress and working out specific character strategies. As we spend more and more time on our game, we learn that our universal game plan doesn't always work well, especially against certain characters or archetypes. So, we fracture our game plan and make it into smaller ones. Maybe just a couple of firsts. This is the game plan versus grapplers, and this is the game plan versus zoners. Here, we start remembering better what works and what doesn't, and start to reflect on some of the moves we are using against certain characters. And eventually, we have tailor-made plans for the entire cast based on how they are usually played by our opponents. Once you've got the general matchup specifics down, it's time to ascend to the next level. This is stage 4, where you come to the match with an intimate knowledge of your own character, but also of your opponent's character. When people talk about downloading other players, this is to what they are referring. The characters are limited to their functions, but the tempo of different players behind the controls can change the pace of the match entirely. Mochi's Dalsum looks a bit different from Broski's. Punk's Ken looks a bit different from Zero Blast's. The players wielding the characters can really change the whole tone of the matches. To keep progressing through this stage, you need to reflect after matches and stay highly attuned and aware during the set. It actually begins before the first round even starts. Which V system did they pick? Is that the standard against your character, or are they doing something slightly off step from the current meta? Then, as it goes back and forth during the game, you get to collect more data. Are they missing an obvious punish? Is there a gap in their knowledge of your character? Are they back rising or quick rising more often on wake up? Do they default to one consistently? How often do they tech your throws early in a round? How about later in a round? How scrambly do they become when they are cornered? How are they spending their meter? Autopilot is one of the big reasons people can plateau here. They know the matchup, the frame data, and the meta, but they still fail to adjust to their opponent with the appropriate counters. They look without seeing. Then muscle memory takes over, and instead of getting a brutal punish on a callout, they get their usual light punish, or worse, let their opponent steal back their turn. After players can consistently be mindful before, during, and after the match, make adjustments to their plans based on opponent tendencies and how they've been conditioned, they get to make the jump to the final level. I wasn't sure what to call this stage or level, but settled on transcendent because going beyond the usual or ordinary is paramount to staying here. It relies on deeper matchup knowledge and player knowledge from the previous levels, but it also differs in its scope. Here, players dial the lens of the match back. They zoom out to look beyond a single moment in the round to an awareness of the entire match and to the whole set. Will this risky play deflate my opponent and break them psychologically for the following rounds? If I win here and they counterpick, is my pocket character ready to go? If I know my opponent is up a game, will they anticipate more risky play from me this time? And if so, how can I turn their expectation to my own advantage? Players here need accurate risk assessment and the ability to quickly calculate odds of coming back from a health deficit versus saving the meter for the next round. How many exchanges are left to put the opponent in a guess for game scenario? Juggling the mental stack of everything, understanding the options that come when your opponent has a single bar of meter versus two, then preemptively limiting them, all that plus factoring in the amount of time remaining at a round, players at this level can balance it all on their plates. They've also done hours of homework and know how to apply pressure in creative ways to put their opponent in new and unfamiliar situations. Last second crouch to stand movements to change a character's hurt box size to cause an opponent to whiff, micro walk combos, and extremely deliberate button presses are all commonplace. Players utilize all in-game resources and mechanics and make the choice to sacrifice guaranteed immediate damage for more meter gain, better positioning, or better oki. They set themselves up to do well past this immediate moment to give themselves the best odds of winning a round or mounting a comeback no matter the current situation. Sometimes it doesn't go in their favor, 
but there's a reason Warlords have obscenely high win rates and the same names appear constantly across multiple top 64 finishes at offline events. Stage 5 players also think beyond the developers and what they had in mind for a specific move, oftentimes finding new and creative uses for in-game tools. The players at the top end of this stage are typically the ones actively shaping the meta. It's the players at this point who make the game sing. They are the reason we tune in to watch tournament grand finals or drive hours to play against them at high-end events. And though I've labeled it the final stage, it's fluid and there's really no ceiling to this one. The journey continues as far as one wants to walk it. But you let me know what you think of my take on these stages. Where do you think most players fall? Where do you think you are in your development as a player? Is there a stage you think we should add to the mix? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, support your locals, and I'll see you next time.